just in time for Halloween, The Binding of Isaac Rebirth has received a new batch of DLC. Subtitled Afterbirth, this add-on costs almost as much as the base game itself, which in any other case would be a very hard sell. This pack would have to expand the game in pretty substantial ways to justify that. So does it live up to the asking price? Let's take a look at what's been added and find out. Two of the most major changes are the new Greed Mode and Daily Challenges. The challengers are just what their name implies, new daily maps that are offered to everyone to play and complete as efficiently as possible. Everything from picking up items to avoiding damage and completing floors as fast as possible all increase your score. And that end score, should your run end in success or failure, will be pitted against everyone else who also took up the challenge. So if you were looking for a new reason to come back to the game literally every day after birth offers that. But the star of the show is Greed Mode. Essentially Speed Isaac, every floor in this mode is a condensed version of the environments you would normally encounter in the regular game. Stepping on a switch in the middle of the room will trigger both enemies and a few coins to spawn. When you've defeated all the enemies, or when the timer below the switch hits zero, more foes will spawn, encouraging you to be efficient lest you get overrun. You can stop the timer and buy yourself both some breathing room and a chance to use all the money you've gotten to visit the shop, but it's surrounded in spikes meaning you'll lose precious health for ending the waves prematurely. Plus, you also get bonus money for surviving all of the waves in a row, so there's an incentive to stick it out. Every floor in this mode will give you a shop with a new selection of items. One free item room, one locked item room, and a curse room, giving you plenty of opportunities to find upgrades. You only have to defeat 10 waves to move on, 8 normal and 2 boss waves, but you can choose to do an extra boss wave to open up the devil or angel room on that floor, further emphasizing greed mode's risk-reward aspect. It all leads up to one huge boss fight at the bottom, which, by the end, you should theoretically be more than prepared for. And for those wondering, yes, there are new item unlocks associated with defeating this mode with every character. Lilith can't fire tears of her own, instead relying on her Incubus ally to do it for her. She also has the ability to duplicate her allies every other room, painting the picture of a proper temptress who has others do her bidding for her. With a new character comes a new set of unlockables of her own, and speaking of which, many of the conditions for items have been switched around. Even if you got absolutely everything in the base game, it may now say that you haven't actually done what you had done before. Don't panic. This is just because the unlock conditions for those items have now changed, and there are new ones available in their place for accomplishing those feats again in Afterbirth. As stated before, there are even more conditions for what constitutes a successful run, meaning even the toughest challenges in the game will give you proper prizes now. Some of them are even global upgrades, offering passive boosts to all characters, or giving certain ones more starting gear. And that help is much appreciated, because the enemy variety is higher than ever. Each stage of Isaac's journey has several new adversaries to face, many of which are unique to the new areas. For example, instead of the basement, you may end up in the burning basement, complete with its own music track, its own room layouts, and its own set of special enemies only encountered there. Variant floors like this were present in Rebirth, but the differences were never quite this drastic, visually or functionally, and it only gets more stunning the further in you get. The new bosses are particularly well done, offering strategies and challenges no other foe has in the past. And what would DLC for The Binding of Isaac be without new items? Everything from usable and passive upgrades, as well as trinkets, consumables, and even the types of pills you can find have all been expanded right from the get-go without even putting in a single minute of your time. What's exciting about this is that many of these new items function completely differently from any other pickup, like the Nightlight, which shines in the direction you move, slowing down weaker enemies that get caught in the beam. There are also many quality of life upgrades to the underlying systems of the game now. Big things like an upgraded soundtrack with tons of new songs are always nice, but so are little things like smoother animations for the bombs, or the fact that boss life bars now properly adjust for multiple foes. It'll even flash yellow to signify that you managed to beat one of them, helping to communicate the info you need to make those important moment-to-moment -moment decisions that can mean the difference between moving on and starting over. And this is why I can recommend Afterbirth so strongly. It's because of these things that the DLC makes the game not only look better and sound better, but also play better, meaning the game is improved on a base level just for you owning it. 
Every single aspect has been expanded, improved, tweaked, and balanced, making for a bigger, smoother, and more satisfying experience overall. It makes what was already the definitive version of The Binding of Isaac even more so. So if you love this game, picking up Afterbirth should quite frankly be a no-brainer. In my opinion, this is simply how DLC should be done, and without it as a part of your game, I'd say you are definitely missing out.